Cindy Thomas Jimenez, and I work for an agency called the Guadalupe Blanco River Authority. And our office is in Seguin, but we um, have operations all up and down the river basin. And this morning, I'm at a wastewater treatment plant in Lockhart. So Lockhart is just a little bit south of Austin. How many of you know where Austin is? Raise your hand if you know where Austin is. Okay, great, great. Okay. So we're kind of close to Austin. And so this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about how water is treated uh, for drinking water as well as for wastewater. And we're also going to talk a little bit about surface water runoff because I understand that y'all are interested in how we keep our water clean. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good, good. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the water cycle, stormwater runoff, drinking water treatment plants, and wastewater treatment plants. There's a lot of titles on that slide. I understand that. Um, my name is the first one that you see there. I'm the Environmental Education Administrator, and we're going to have a couple of our operators uh, out doing the virtual tour of the plant in a few minutes. So let's move ahead. So I hope y'all are familiar with the water cycle. We need to understand that because we need to understand how water comes to the surface of the earth. So we do know that the earth is the only planet in our solar system that has water and that's what makes it special. And because we have water, we have life on this planet. So the water cycle is a fairly simple system. You have water on the surface of the earth and you have water underground, but we're gonna talk mainly about surface water today. And if you can picture a globe, hopefully you know that about 75% of our planet is water. Now the driving force behind the water cycle, of course, is the sun. We're just the right distance away from the sun that we have water on this planet. So as the sun shines down on the planet, the liquid water that's at the surface, and most of it is in oceans, some of it is in lakes and rivers and creeks, but most of that surface water is in oceans. So as the sun shines down, the water will change from a liquid to a gas, it, and then that's the process of evaporation. So evaporation causes a change in the state of matter. The water then uh, starts to uh, gather up in clouds, and that process is called condensation. And I always think the best way to remember condensation is to remember that the word cloud starts with a C, just like the word condensation starts with a C. So once the water in the clouds gets heavy enough, then it will start to fall back to the earth, usually as rain, sometimes as snow or sleet. And we call that process precipitation. So precip precipitation occurs, the water comes back to the surface, and it hits the ground and, you know, a couple of things can happen. If it rains on land, then some of that water can percolate down into the ground and become groundwater. And some of it is going to run off. If we have a heavy rain, I don't know about up there in Irving, but down here where we are, sometimes we have very heavy rains and flooding. So when that happens, you have a lot of runoff. And that's just little streams of water that start to form on the ground. It might be going down a street where you see it go down into a gutter. It might be running across a farmer's field. It could be running across your yard. But the runoff just are little streams that feed into small creeks, and then the small creeks feed into bigger creeks that feed into rivers. And everything is headed downhill. The water's always moving, and that's what we refer to as runoff. And so from there, the water cycle just starts all over again. All right? Any questions on the water cycle? Sounds familiar. We're all good. Okay, good, good. Do y'all know the water cycle song, boys and girls? Yes. We have a lot of no's. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, one word that I didn't use, and it's not on this image, but I use the word accumulation. And that means as the water starts to gather in like rivers or creeks, it means uh, it accumulates or starts to, you know, large quantities of water will pull together. So you have to know that word to know my water cycle song. So I'm going to sing it one time, even though I'm not much of a singer, but I'm going to sing it and hopefully it'll stick in your head. It'll help you out when y'all take that star test in fifth grade. So uh, let's start off with evaporation. So it goes evaporation, condensation, precipitation on my mind, accumulation, the water cycle. Yes, it happens all the time. Y'all think you can remember that? 
I bet your teacher can. She'll she'll teach it back to you. Y'all had talked about water treatment. So there are two different types of water treatment, and they're very, very different. But they're also both very important. So we're going to start off with drinking water. And that's where we take what we call raw water. I know that's a weird term, raw water. But that means that water is just coming straight out of a river or a lake, some type of surface water. So we take raw water, we pump it out, or we could pump it from underground, from an aquifer. But we pump the water out from somewhere, and we send it to basically it's kind of like a factory. We call it a drinking water treatment plant. So they take that water from a river or lake or aquifer, and they clean it. They send it through a process that gets it clean enough that, that it's suitable for us to use for drinking water. And there are regulations, the government has regulations about how clean that water has to be when it comes out of your faucet. Now, the other type of water treatment is wastewater treatment. That is where we take the water that went down your drain, it went down your toilet, your dishwasher, your washing machine, the water that we humans use. So it goes down the drain and it goes to a place we call a wastewater treatment plant. So they take that dirty water. And they send it through a process that gets it clean enough that we can then put the water back into a stream. So we clean that water up and we put it back into a creek or back into a river. And then that same water continues on downhill and heads, you know, towards the coast. So when we go out to the um, plant, we're going to be looking at a wastewater treatment plant. So this is just an image that shows you the drinking water treatment process. You see over to the left, it says raw water. So we pump water out of a river. It goes into a little bit of tree pre-treatment where they kind of get out any sticks or gravel or rocks or thing, fish, things like that. Then they send it into a basin where they add a chemical to it, and that chemical will start to grab onto the larger pieces of sand and sediment that are still in the water. And then in the next basin, in sedimentation, all that uh, heavy stuff, the, we call it flock, it kind of settles down at the bottom of that basin. You can see there's a little cutaway where there's stuff at the bottom there. And from there, we send it into filters. So the water goes through gigantic filters of sand and gravel and coal. And that gets out any further pieces of sediment or impurities. And then the last step is disinfection. And the reason we use disinfection is because there could be things like uh, bacteria in the water that you don't necessarily want that coming out of your faucet. That would not be good. So we add some type of a chemical to kill off any type of harmful bacteria. And usually it's something like chlorine. Y'all are probably familiar with chlorine in a swimming pool. So we add a tiny bit of that to kill off any bacteria. And then from there, it goes to your water towers. And then after your water towers, it goes to your house and to your schools and to your businesses. So that's the drinking water treatment process. The next slide is going to show us the wastewater treatment. Now, remember, this is water that you used in your homes and businesses. So you can see those red pipes coming from those houses there. So that means the dirty water is coming out of the houses, and then it heads over to the wastewater treatment plant. So the, at the wastewater treatment plant, the water that's coming in, we have a funny name for it. We call it influent, and you can see that on the bottom there. So the water coming in is called influent. We send it through a bar screen to get out whatever is in there. You know, people flush weird things down the toilet. You know, we find things like Cheeto bags or Snicker bar wrappers or, you know, jewelry. We find dollar bills, all kinds of weird stuff at the bar screen. So they rake out that kind of stuff. Then they send it into a place where they remove any grit that's like sand or gravel or heavy solids. And then it goes into an aeration basin. And y'all are going to see an aeration basin up close and personal this morning. And that's where all the excitement is. You got, we aerate the water, we, we, you know, inject water into that basin. And in that basin, there are a bunch of microbes or bugs. And the bugs go to work and they start eating all of the bacteria that's in the water. It's really kind of a magical place. And from there, uh, it goes to a clarifier where the, we, we start to let the water settle out again. And we send it, you know, you can see a filter there. Here at the Lockhart plant, we also use UV that's called ultraviolet disinfection. And we use that to sterilize any remaining bacteria. And then from there, we, you know, we'll send it back to the creek or the river. Now, at the bottom of that, you'll see it talks about solids dewatering and solids disposal. 
So we do have from the bottom of that aeration basin or the clarifier, we have uh, some brown matter, which is very organic. It kind of smells like freshly plowed um, dirt. And we call those solids. We actually use a word called sludge. And so we have that sludge. We either, we can use, some farmers like to use it in fields. Some wastewater plants like to just haul it off to the landfill. There's some uh, places that will actually buy that sludge and they'll use it to make compost. So over there in Austin, they sell a product called Dillo Dirt. It's kind of a funny name, Dillo Dirt. And over in San Antonio, they have compost they call Alamo compost because everything in San Antonio is about the Alamo. It's kind of funny. All right. So that is wastewater treatment. And that is where y'all are going to go um, out in just a moment. The last thing I want to talk to you about, the last slide, is just a little bit about surface water runoff. Um, I find I work with a lot of students and they, they think that the water that's running down the road that goes into the gutters on the side of the road, we call that water storm water. And a lot of kids think that that water goes, you know, goes to the sewer is what they tell me. But I'm sorry to tell you, really it does not. That surface runoff actually heads straight into a creek or straight into a river. And it can hold some pollutants. And we call those pollutants non-point source pollution. We know that pollutants are in the creeks and rivers because we, we study these creeks and rivers a lot. And we, we have a lot of data that shows us that there's things in there. But we don't know exactly where it's coming from. It's coming from all over. You can see the little row of houses on that picture. That's just a subdivision. You know, we've got people fertilizing their yards and you've got pets that are making a mess out there. And we've got pesticides. We're trying to kill things we don't like. And over in the city, you've got a lot of urban uh, runoff from roads like got oil and gas and things like that out of our cars. Uh, you've got rural homes. Again, they may have uh, septic tanks. They may be using chemicals out in their yards. They might have farm animals. Uh, then we've got, you know, the forest, which has organic matter. And we've got crops over to the far right. And those crops, you know, our farmers provide food for us. But, you know, when they plow up their fields, they create a situation where we could have loose sediment or dirt. And that's actually considered to be a pollutant. So if they have a heavy rain, they can lose some of that sediment to the stream. Uh, erosion will take place. And then if they have any chemicals on their field, that's going to get carried away in the runoff as well. Where it says animal feeder, when you have a lot of animals in an area, like maybe they have a dairy farm or something like that, they're producing a lot of waste and that waste does have bacteria in it. So really all the different ways that we use the land can have an effect on how clean our water is. So our surface water runoff is a big concern because when that runoff goes into our creeks and rivers and then we use those rivers for our drinking water, it makes it even more challenging for our drinking water treatment plants to get that water clean. Well, I'm going to send you all out to the plant at this point. All right. Field trip for us. Field trip, a virtual field trip. So my name is Elizabeth Gutierrez, and I work at GBRA as the Environmental Education Specialist. Today, here with me, we're outside of the Lockhart Wastewater Treatment Plant. We have Eduardo Montaña, who's going to give us the, our tour today. And we're going to focus on something called the bar screen that Miss Cindy had mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and switch on over. Miss Cindy was telling you about the bar screen here at our wastewater plant in Lockhart, Texas. And uh, it does do its job. And what you said, it does take out all the trash and uh, that we do not want running into our structures or into our basin. And you can see the bar screen actually working right now. And that's what breaks out what doesn't want to, what we don't want to go into a, uh, into our wastewater plant. And if Liz can show you off to our left, there is a box that collects all the trash that gets picked up of there. And all that trash comes from areas and people that throw stuff down into our system. And you saw, and we also have in this same area, we do also have to our right on the other side of that conveyor, we have what's also called the grit removal system, which Cindy also mentioned in the slideshow that she presented. Would you have a bunch of these different machines? Like how many, how many are there? To uh, oh man, we actually have one bar screen, which uh, takes care of over a million and a half gallons a day. Ooh. 
Woo. So everything that the city of Lockhart would operate this facility for, uh, the entire uh, sewage comes down this way, and we treat all of it at this plant, and also uh, this one bar screen takes care of all that. Do, how many times a day would you have to dump um, all, all of the waste that's collected? <laughs> well, <laughs> this, this unit here, the unit itself, the rake itself, operates about 15 minutes per hour. Right now, we have it on hand for administration. So we actually, and then the, what Liz showed you to our left in that box, gets collected once a week. And we estimate between uh, maybe 15 to uh, 20 yards, which comes out to about maybe over a thousand pounds of stuff to go through. Well, all right. So once a week, that doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> no, no. But we do, do get our, I would say, a variety of. Uh, um, does it run 24 hours a day? The screen? Yeah. The, uh, the screen, no, ma'am. It runs, like, yeah, yes. But I can tell you, it runs 15 minutes per hour. Oh, per hour. Every hour, it comes on and runs. Okay. Go ahead and move to the next section of our plants. It's going to take us about a minute or two of fast walking, so we're going to go back to Cindy <laughs> so that okay. we can talk while we're turning off our okay. video here. So we'll be right back. All right. Uh, one thing that I did not mention is the way the water, the waste that comes into these wastewater plants, it is, um, I believe, 99% liquid. So there really isn't that much heavy stuff that doesn't dissolve. Most everything that comes into the wastewater plant, stuff has dissolved out. So it's 99% liquid. Uh, it typically is a brown color, that is true, but we don't have that many solids that we have to deal with, so that's a good thing. I also want to tell you that this town of Lockhart is nowhere near as big as Irving. Twelve or 13,000 people here in Lockhart, Texas, so y'all probably have a, uh, more than one wastewater treatment plant for your city. I'm going to guarantee you do. Even here in Lockhart, we have two. And so it's the larger the city, the more of a waste that they have to deal with and the more of a challenge it is for the city. But we need to make sure that the water that we put back into the creeks and rivers is clean because we have to remember that there are fish and other organisms living in these creeks and rivers. And we want to make sure that the water that they live in is clean. And we also have to remember that when the water goes into the creek and river, then downstream somewhere, another city is going to pull that same water out and use it for their drinking water. We're back at it again. We're over here. Liz showed you all the mixer. This is where we all the uh, activity happens as far as the uh, microorganisms taking care of the what we consider the food coming in to our plant. And uh, what she showed you all was the mixer. That mixer is what keeps... Um, adding dissolved oxygen into this basin so our microorganism alive. And now we have uh, two structures. They're called the two clarifiers. This brown aeration basin, this uh, sludge in this basin here will flow into the bottom of those clarifiers, those tanks there. And those clarifiers are called our settling basins. The heavy sludge settles to the bottom of this clarifier, and whatever comes on the top, which is called our effluent to these clarifiers, is what actually gets sent out to our uh, disinfection area, and then from there it'll go on uh, Plum Creek. The sludge on the bottom of these clarifiers is for a little further treatment and aging process to occur before it goes to what we call spell press, final disposal to uh, sludge. And that gets removed and it goes from our, our plant, and gets hauled off on that blue box sitting over there and it gets sent to where we, we send our sludge for further uh, composting and use for what Cindy mentioned earlier as dental nuts mm. for fertilizer for the yards. Anybody have any little questions? So if 
you find something really great in that screen at the beginning, like the money, what would you do with it? Well, the guys pick up a lot of change on there. They usually just put it to the side and sit there for for, uh, for our retirement. you are going to be working for a while. <laughs> water clear so if it's a little bit murky or cloudy um how does it get to be so clear it's all done biologically that's what the uh, microorganisms do inside our uh, this aeration basin that's why the uh we got to keep the food to microorganism balance in order for the bugs to do all the work for us and they get nice and aged where it goes to what I told you the other cars and that sludge gets to a perfect age and perfect density that it just settles down to the bottom and it leaves nothing but clear water on top. So do you have to do um, testing to see if that balance is correct? Yes ma'am we do testing on the beginning of the plant, of the plant and then the final going out and uh -huh. those are testing that we do, and then also the final tests are off to make sure that we're meeting the same Very important question from one of our teachers. Does it smell? They, that's the first question that comes out of everybody all the time. <laughs> Actually, the only area <laughs> the only area that really has an odor is going to be your uh, influence. We showed you where the bar screen was at. Once it gets into this basin where we have the sludge and it gets all the mix, the... Uh, so the uh, odor is more of a earthy, uh -huh. like when you go out in the field and they're plowing the field and you smell that earth, the dirt, that's what it, that's the odor you're picking up. But uh, so you won't, so really just you come out to the plant, you, yeah, you, you, you come out to our plant, you won't, it won't smell <laughs> as, as what you think. Uh, where do you get the microorganisms from? Uh, we're going to try to make it back into that lab inside of the facility where we can show you for some of that water testing. All right, do y'all have any questions that I can answer? Have you ever found IDs in the water? <laughs> I can tell you a weird thing that uh, flushed down the toilet once for me, and that was a pair of sunglasses. Ah. So I, I had a pair of sunglasses on my head, and I reached over to flush the toilet, and they fell into the toilet right about the time the water was going down the drain, and that was the, that was the end of those sunglasses. So I'm sure they find really weird things here at some of these places. That's a good question. Does some of the water come from sinks and garbage disposals? Oh, definitely, yes. It comes from sinks, garbage disposals, dishwashers, washing machines, uh, and the toilet. So here we have Cindy along with Jason Eads, our chief operator of the wastewater treatment plant. And let's see if we can get a tour of the lab. Let's see who's going to take us in. So this is the uh, lab here, and we have a test that we have to run daily. Uh, we run E. coli, which uh, tells us we have treated the water effectively enough to get rid, remove the, uh, the bacteria from the water so it is safe to go back into the stream. We have right here, actually, one of the things you have to do when you are uh, monitoring the wastewater process is to look at your oxygen levels to make sure that you're feeding your bugs enough oxygen and your concentration levels, which are, uh, right here we run a settling test and it, it, by gravity you'll see that the, uh, the sludge that is in the uh, mixed liquor, we call it what you saw out there mixed up was mixed liquor, but this will give you an indication of how, what the concentration is. We have other tests that are more uh, accurate and then we'll give you the exact concentration levels which uh, we'll do a flow weighted average on we'll run samples this is what it'll look like once we weigh it out but we'll take a, a portion of the sample we'll run it through a filter onto a pad and we will weigh out we'll get a tear weight we'll weigh what the filter uh, weighs prior to the uh, sample going through it and then we will dry it and get all the moisture out of it and then do another way that will get, well, there's a calculation that will tell you exactly what your concentrations are in these basins and your concentration of your solids and the concentration of your 
your concentration of your solids has a direct connection to your oxygen levels and, uh, and also with the settling. What's interesting to note about what we're doing here, by monitoring the oxygen levels, we're making sure that these bugs that you're looking at right here have adequate oxygen to, to break down and digest the waste that are coming into here. But what's interesting is when you think about this, we're really not doing anything that is outside of what would naturally happen. All we're doing is we're doing it in a controlled and concentrated environment because this would take place in a natural stream. If you went to the bathroom in a natural stream, the natural aeration process that takes place is it cascades over rocks. Well, we have a concentrated amount of waste because we have a big city. And so we have to, we can't let everybody just go to the bathroom in the streams. Mm -hmm. So we add oxygen to it and it takes place as a natural process. So are there any questions for the class? We're about to wrap up and we'd love to hear some questions for me if y'all. What happens if you find fish? What do you do with them? <laughs> Would they be alive still? We've had a couple of little fish, but nothing. We had varieties. We had a crawdad, like Jason says, and we had some little fish, but nothing that they'll make it through as far as uh -huh. living. Uh-huh. Now, typically, done. we wouldn't have any live fish making it into a wastewater treatment plant because it's connected to homes uh, in a pipeline. Now, if we had a water treatment plant where it's pulling in the wall rod water, there's usually a screen to prevent fish from going mm. into that. So that's okay. a great question. Have you Wendy outside? Uh, like knives or forks? <laughs> we get knives, forks, and hot wheels. Pretty much anything that could get accidentally flushed down the toilet is what's going to make it to a wastewater treatment plant. So please be very mindful of what you're putting in there because it can be very difficult for our water operators across the country uh, to deal with those things. And sometimes it, it can wreak havoc on our systems. So we, we try to keep, we try to do our best to make sure everything's in tip top order. So where do those bugs come from? The microorganism is a natural process that's within the uh, biosolids or the mixed liquor and then also what you actually deposit or flush down the toilet as well. And then also on the, uh, depending on type of plant, facility that you operate, you grow, you grow the different type of bacteria or microorganisms based on the amount of age, dissolved oxygen, and then the, also the concentrations of your uh, uh, your solids. So when we're talking about those live bugs, those are our decomposers in the environment. So if you think about your kid or your your instruments, those are the critters that are gonna break down all of the waste that you can find in the environment, whether it's organic like leaves, those bugs can decompose those leaves. For us at a wastewater treatment plant, that's going to be the waste that's coming in from our homes and restaurants and office buildings and different places like that. So in a way, those are our decomposers that are helping break down that material. I wanted to show you this screen. This is on our website and it's another way you can visit a wastewater treatment plant. It's a virtual tour that's online all the time. So if you go to, uh, we've got our web address here at the top. So it's gbra.org forward slash wastewater dash treatment dash facility. So you can look at this if the kids have any more questions that weren't answered okay. today. <laughs> All right, we well, appreciate for having us. I'm glad fun. we could help out. All right, thank you so much. You'll uh, have a great afternoon. You too. Bye. <laughs>